We left the third paragraph. Third page, 738, Chovos third paragraph. Regarding any area of knowledge. When a, 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 a student begins applying himself to try to understand that branch of knowledge, when he applies himself regarding to that branch of knowledge, there is like an elevated, a spiritual power. Which no one can provide for him. It's like, you know, it's like the Imena Nili Mili. There's certain things you can't be given. I could explain you how to understand, but to understand you have to understand. Right? That's the way it is. You could explain it endless times over, but either you get it or you don't get it. Mm -hmm. She says, no person could provide that for the person. It's a spirit. Based on this analogy, you're able to understand the majority of one's involvement regarding mitzvahs it has to do with our physicality, putting on tefillin, talis, whatever it may be, eating matzah, sitting in the sukkah. Even though we go through physical motions, but it's to awaken. It should, it should be in our hearts and in, in the in the depths of our beings. Because that's what service is based upon. What service? Service is dedication. You dedicate it. You serve a master. Let's say I teach you how to serve a master, but you don't you don't have any 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 concern for that master. You go through the motions. So what what service? Service is dedication. What's dedication? That's feeling. That's a sense of feeling. That's the root of Torah. So what does it say? If you revere him, then you serve him. Based on the degree of Yiro, that will determine the degree and the quality of service. Torah is close to you, in your mouth and in your heart to do. So what are we talking about? Whenever it speaks about the fulfillment of Torah mitzvahs, what is it? It's all predicated on Yira. Right? We say, What is the foundation, the prerequisite? To all wisdom. It's Yiras Hashem. Otherwise, it's just intellectualism. What's its value? There's a Ramchal. The Ramchal writes, we say that, Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam. You study Torah, you activate unlimited forces in the spiritual realms when you study Torah. Even one word of Torah. She says, why? I mean, you're just saying a word. Because when our Kodesh Baruch Hu created existence, he linked Torah to every aspect of existence. It's like, you know, you have a system and the system is not hooked up. You can press every button, nothing happens. So when do you have the effect of the system? If the system is connected, so when you touch a button, it creates the consequence. Right? Everything now is affected. Before our Kodesh created the world, Torah was something unrelated to existence. When he created the world, everything is linked to Torah. When you say this word at a certain level of dedication or purity, it activates this type of force. And it touches upon every aspect of existence. But if a Kodesh Baruch wouldn't have made that linkage, you could say the words, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a goy parroting words of Torah. It means nothing. You teach a parrot to say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Hashem Echod. Does that activate any force? It activates nothing. That would, the human being would the same, be the same thing. It's only because a Kodesh Baruch created the world where there is that linkage 
That's the reason why it activates these unlimited forces. That's the Rambchal. So again, when do you have the activation at that certain level? If it's predicated on Europe, you have that level of dedication, of service. It's, inter it's interesting. I'd say 95% of people, 98% of people, 99% of people have no relevance to this. Instead, here would saying everything is contingent on this. Most people, we hope, go. I'm happy if you go through the motions. Just do it. Forget about the quality of the mitzvah. I mean, it's a fact, right? It's a fact. Because if a person would have a sense of dedication, of service, you know, it's interesting. You know, and things link, link to one one another. The way people live their lives outside of their religion. It affects the way you live your life within your religion. I'll give me an example. At one time in the United States, there was a movie called something that was called Patriot. What was a patriot? You live to be a country. It's not a it's sacrifices for your country. And you put yourself out for the country. And you were happy to contribute to your country. And it was a feeling. But that same feeling, because that is the nature of your being, of the person, when he did his religion, there was a pride in being a Jew, even if he wasn't learned. Even if he wasn't learned, there was a pride to be a Jew. Today, where's the pride in anything? Right? People, they're, they're, they're proud, they make a lot of money. They have the, 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 that, that house. Do you know how much tax I pay on my house? You know, that's something to be proud about. You know, maybe you could live in a house which is a tenth of it, you pay a lot less tax, give more, give more stock. Up. Right? But that's, they're, they're proud of that. So, but so the way they live their lives in the secular, it reflects even in, 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 the, in, the, in the spiritual. You know, I'm dedicated. I'm a servant of my country. So if you're a, that person can be a servant of, 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 of his God also. But if that is never, never develops in the person, so what I do, you know, what do you put on the film? You ask a 16-year-old kid. Oh, because my father says, I better or else. Okay. That's why he puts on tefillin or whatever, where he just goes through the motions. Does he have a sense of it? No. It's an obligation. He has to do it. Goes through the motions. Of what? Immediate. I mean, we, we, there's a concept known as tzaddik goes like kodesh makayim. That you go, person goes for bracha and to a certain type of tzaddik. He gives a bracha, and then you see it works. You see it works. So evidently, why is it working? He must have something behind him. His words are more meaningful than somebody else's words. The question is why? Because he's wearing a black coat and a black hat. Is that why it's working? Evidently, it's a lot more than that. It's because we're talking about who the person is. Meisha said, "Lemali b'koch odom." He says, "This is something that goes is beyond man's reach." Lo yitochno at yiporid merov tavos of abahamios. You cannot come upon the sense of service and feeling unless you separate yourself from all the, des the animalistic desires. V'yachriach tov, and you take control of your nature. You know, most people, the lives dictate them. You have to dictate your life. This is the whole the Mishnah Pirkei Ovos. Ein ben Chorin, El Misha Osik Batora. Who's truly a free man? A person who engages in Torah study. What do you mean free? I'm free? I'm free to do whatever you want. The answer, you're not free to do whatever you want. People, people I can't help myself. So you're free to do whatever you want. You can't help yourself. So you may blame your wife. Okay. But that's what you want. It's okay. You, you can't. So, so what is it? So until the person extricates himself, separates himself from the majority of the animalistic drives and takes control of his nature. What is, what is making, what is choice? Doing, not doing what you want to do. That's making the right choice. Because inclination-wise, we want to do other things. 
it's it's always going against the grain. That's what it is. Viiksha tnuosov. He says, Viiksha tnuosov. He should bind his movements. He says his motions. Hevir also habore begufo beivorov mashiyesh bicholto. A person has an obligation to serve his master with his body and with his limbs. He says, so it should be easier for him to fulfill him. It's interesting. It's interesting. You know, there's the famous Mesil Sashorim that outer actions influence one's inner feelings. And this, it's based on the, the Chinuch. The Chinuch says that Odom Nifalafi Pulosov, that a person is a product of his actions, of his of his actions. He says if you take a Russia and you force him against his will to, over an extended period of time to do acts of righteousness, he will become a tzaddik. Although he's forced to do to live as a tzaddik. And if you take a tzaddik and over time if he's forced to do acts of evil, he will become evil. The act, external behavior inf- affects and influences the essence of the person. That's what you become. So therefore he's saying, Hashem gave us obligations. The majority of obligations manifest itself in actions. Tefillin, tzitzis, kashas, whatever it is. But that outer action, uh, it, it's to make it easy for us. How does a person have to serve God? With your feelings, your mind, and your heart. Unless you have the actions to condition you to serve Him, it's not, not possible. Because here, physically wise, I'm going another direction. So how is my mind and my emotions supposed to be focused on Hashem? So everything has to be in sync. Therefore, it's to make it easy for you. Therefore, he, he put this obligation upon the person. To be continued. <laughs>